morning, everybody. Uh, it's Peter here. So finally, we're here. It's a final project. Um, so, so this is uh, this one is a data streaming project. Uh, it's a very interesting one. I was really excited to work on this. So here is how my uh, diagram looks like. Uh, uh, not a lot in here, but like I I have decided to change the. Uh, 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 I'm using the same API that uh, we were given, but I changed the route. So it's a little bit more interesting and exciting because we did a route seven. So uh, this time I used route 42, which is really close to the place where I live. And that's why it was really interesting to watch outside of the window and just like see like if the bus is really passing by and that was really, really cool. So uh, uh, because everything was working for me like as per clocks. So how it works, I have like a, my first DC2 instance in AWS, uh, which uh, holds three Docker containers. First one is NiFi. So um, uh, NiFi, uh, what we're doing with NiFi is uh, I have it here. So we're in, in, uh, like uh, ingesting the data into a SQL. And what we're doing here is like, um, uh, invoking invoking the uh, JSON file and just reformatting it into a SQL format and just putting it in. Uh, it was really really cool and interesting to use this uh, this platform. Um, uh, sorry, got a little bit lost. So so then we we had to run the MySQL server. Uh, was connection uh, uh, to uh, to uh, Amazon MSK was uh, was Kafka Connect uh, Debezium, um, where the data is just becoming a binary binary and then does it's very 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 fast goes into the streaming to the ingested into Apache Spark where it it's becoming like a where it's just a transformed into like a, a parquet data lake format, uh, format and just uh, uh, ingested further uh, into the, and stored in the S3 bucket. And next it just goes into Athena where we can query it. And then it goes into a super set where we can play around a little bit with everything. And then like an end user can have access to everything that we did so far. Uh, so let me, can you guys see my browser? Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, so uh, here we can see that the data for bus is coming through. So it's updated every 30 seconds. Um, uh, so we can see the information is up and running. So then I can move to EMR and we can see that here we have on the right side, we have Kafka. Uh, uh, we can see that the data is getting streamed and the transformation uh, through the through the spark is happening as well and the streaming uh, goes well so in the uh, so the main thing that i oops this is wrong uh the main thing that i worked on is like a and spend a lot of time. It was uh, super sad, just trying to get the analytics well. Uh, so here we have uh, two routes. I uh, I have the eastbound route and westbound route. So basically, what's happening every thirty seconds, the the the, the streaming information is getting updated. So here uh, in the purple, we can see all the buses going from the Finch station, which is here. Uh, into uh, and heading towards eastbound to to the last stop here at McNichol. So we can see that currently we have two buses running east eastbound, and the max average speed for these guys is thirty nine, which is really cool. So you can see uh, what time of the day we can get a little bit more analytical, and we can see what time of the day like the uh, the the route is really congested with traffic and stuff like this. And we can, we can run some queries and uh, put everything in graphs pretty much. So uh, here we have like a 
westbound, so everything in the same manner. But here we can see that the buses are going uh, westbound and it's, and it's getting updated every 30 seconds. As you can see, it just got updated. Uh, so uh, here I'm getting a little bit more analytical. So I've been running it for more than a day, I guess. Uh, so uh, currently we can see that we have um, four active buses and one is just uh, standing on the station at all times uh, with no st status. So if you can see, so by the time of the day, you can see that, for example, during rush hour, they have uh, TTC is running more buses and slightly when it's clo getting closer to the nighttime, the buses, uh, buses amount just uh, going down. They're just decreasing the amount of vehicles. And when the morning comes, you can see the rush hour, the number of buses is getting higher as well, uh, increases. But the, the thing is, uh, today is Saturday, they probably have less uh, buses than on Friday yesterday. So here we can see this chart. So uh, uh, same here, you can just see how many buses are, uh, are just stopped on the station. And, here is the average hourly speed by the westbound and eastbound. So uh, westbound is uh, like a, uh, so you can see by the time again. So what time of the day the buses are going faster. So you can see the traffic is lower uh, during nighttime. So I, uh, I think there was only one bus during nighttime and that's why it like a one of the routes just didn't have any speed information. That's why we have some stop in here, but we can still analyze on this. So um, uh, I, I was really interesting. So I, I I really wanted to. Oh, let me go back to the to my presentation. So um, so currently I started uh, studying the ter uh, Terraform. Uh, it's really cool. Uh, so I really like to uh, incorporate it in my pipeline. So just to automate and manage the pipeline faster, I just found that when I'm doing everything manually, so when I start the pipeline from scratch, it takes up to like a, a one hour, maybe two hours to start everything because like all the clusters and EC2 instances and especially the EMR cluster gets so long to start. And that's why I got really interested in Terraform. So currently I'm looking in that direction. And also I have started working on the integration of bus stops uh, and geospatial data processing. So basically I can uh, run queries using, using the geolocation. So this is where I'm aiming to go in the future. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I just don't want to take too much time, like going uh, over and over over the uh, pipeline that we everybody been using. But thank you so much for uh, your time. And um, if you have any questions, just go ahead. <laughs> yeah, great job. Uh, I think I really like the way that you are, you know, gathering the information and uh, analyzing based on, you know, what you're familiar with. And I think that's super awesome. And the graph that you're building in SuperSet is really, you know, telling us a story of what's going on with the TTC operations, right? So that's fantastic. Uh, and also I, I like, you know, your thinking process of approaching the infrastructure as a code uh, to setting up all the, you know, kind of components within AWS. I think that's going to be a you know, a very valuable experience and also a skill set that, you, that you're that you going to acquire and, uh, and and in the future, you're going to benefit from this a lot. So you know, good job and uh, a great presentation. Uh, it's really uh, impressive overall. Uh, that's for me, no, no other questions. Thank you so much, Edwin. Uh, cool, uh, cool uh, data presentation. Uh, really like your graphs uh, with this. Uh... Uh, speed indication. Uh, it's very awesome. Uh, well done. Thank you, Sam. Good job, Peter. This uh, moving dots of the the bus vehicle let me think of made me think of my uh, Uber Eats when I very expect to you know see see the driver uh, 
deliver my food and the body is moving. I can always hope it to <laughs> interesting to see it and hope it to move faster. Great. Thank you, Jen. Uh, thank you.